green trumpets, blue clarinets for 100 bucks. Hey, they come with white gloves too. The music store will charge you so much more money than that. I mean, a saxophone is a saxophone, right? Parents, I've made this video for you about what happens when you start looking for cheaper band instruments on the internet. It really is a big deal. I'll show you your future and what to expect if you buy one of these internet specials after about a year in band. And if money really is an issue where you need to consider one of these instruments for your child, I'll show you some much better options and a couple other ideas that can help you get an instrument for your student. Oh, and this sound? One's playing a normal band instrument, one is playing an off-brand internet special. This video is part of the Band Directors Anonymous project. For band directors, buy a band director. Buying an instrument is not the same as buying generic coffee or cereal and expect it to be the same. The easiest way to help parents understand what these instruments are like is it's like a toy from a dollar store. That toy may work well, play great, and be awesome for a week, but we all know that at some point it's going to break. It is not a toy that's going to be passed down from generation to generation. These instruments are cheaper because they're made with lesser quality materials, sometimes different materials. There are techniques that they do that are often, sometimes are shortcuts. They use different parts. They're not sa the same thing. It's not apples to apples. This was purchased new this year off the internet, and you can already see that the lacquer and the precious color is starting to peel. The picture on the right where my thumb is, you need to pay attention to, that's where the mouthpiece goes into the trumpet. Mouthpieces get stuck on a daily, if not weekly basis in every band room, and there's a simple tool that pops the mouthpiece off so it doesn't have to go to the repair shop. However, when they designed the mouthpiece receiver like this with the rounded edge, there's not enough flare to get that mouthpiece remover on it, and it ends up tearing the trumpet up. And oftentimes I've seen mouthpieces get stuck on these and we can't get them off or they have to go to the repair shop because they're not designed properly. And if you don't think your student is going to get their mouthpiece stuck, I got news for you. Every kid does it. This is the valves of the same new trumpet. Notice how the metal is already starting to grind and burnish from the inside. Notice the little bits of yellow where you can see I, what I guess is the plating starting to come off. This is a new trumpet. This should not be happening. And this monstrosity is an internet trumpet after about one year of light use in a middle school band program. The plating on the valves, the smooth part that lets them go up and down, has worn off leaving the bare metal exposed underneath, and now it actually rusts inside the valve casings. To give you an idea of how extreme and how unusual the wear and tear of this instrument is, here's another trumpet. This instrument is almost 40 years old. It has lasted so well that the rest of the instrument has fallen apart. The braces have broken and I've scrapped it for other things, but the valves are still clean, plating intact, and work very well. The most common problem these brass instruments have is their valves are just not machined very well and they grind and catch. As I twist the valve in this video, it's catching and there's mechanical problems. No amount of valve oil is going to overcome that. It's hard to show in a video just how hard these valves are on the casings, so I came up with this little experiment. You put the valves in the casing and then you shake and jiggle the instrument. The valves should fall into the casing. This shows that they're made well and that they, they work well but notice that sometimes I can't get the valves to get into the casings. It gives you an idea of the mechanical issues I'm talking about. Now let's look at a clarinet. This instrument was purchased new off the internet last year, and it's now survived a little over a year of use in my band program. The green arrow on the left shows that the mouthpiece still, even after a year of breaking in, cannot get fully into the barrel. This causes the instrument to play horribly out of tune. I can get it in with a lot of force, but then the student can't get it out. This is just poorly made. The picture on the right has a green crescent that is showing you where that key should be. It bends easily and it's out of position. Same in this next picture, both of the green crescents are showing you where the keys should be. If you look closely, you can see the indentation of where it should be. They are out of a lot of alignment, which causes the instrument to leak and play very poorly and weakly. This is the case. Notice the rivets that are wearing Notice if you look along the seam of where the case is supposed to close, it is bent and warped. Again, this is just a year of a kid putting his instrument away and taking it to and from his school. This case looks like it's been around the world and back. And it doesn't close very well anymore either. This is where I really lose my marbles with this 
instrument. So earlier I showed you that the mouthpiece still doesn't fit into the barrel and is like mechanically too big to fit. Yet the other places where this clarinet puts together, the joints are so loose and have deteriorated so quickly that the instrument almost falls apart. Now, this is common in clarinets for the corks to need, to need to be replaced, but not after a year of use and not on all the joints and this loose. All these loose connections make the instrument play horribly. It's very difficult to get air into it. It's basically leaking all over the place. Clarinets should not bend and flex in this way. This instrument is just poorly made, and this is what happens when you buy a $100 clarinet off the internet. They literally fall apart. The key action is very weak because the springs that pop them up and down are very weak or deteriorate or lose their function. Cheap internet trombones are going to suffer a similar fate as the trumpet because the slide as it moves up and down, this is just like a giant valve. When the plating wears on this and then it gets all rusty inside, it's really hard to move and it's a nightmare. Uh, also, the slide, you have to imagine the abuse this takes in middle school. Any sort of dent or ding on the outside of the slide is going to make it hard for it to mechanically move up and down. Now, imagine that your trombone is made out of inferior metals or a softer alloy, or it's just not as thick. Do you think when it gets dropped for the first time it's going to dent easily? You betcha. And then the slide doesn't work. The green crescent shows where the flute key is supposed to go. There is a little indentation in the pad that has to hit fit just right. If it's at all slightly out of alignment or doesn't close just right, the flute leaks air and does not play. Now the arrow in this picture shows the A flat key. Notice how it sticks out like a sore thumb? Now imagine when this thing dro gets dropped on the first second week of school. It will bend out of shape. This is very common and one of the most frequent flute repairs that I have to do in a middle school classroom. Imagine a metal fork. How many times can you bend it back and forth before it snaps? On a good instrument, a lot. On a cheap internet instrument, not so many. Oh, and when the key breaks, good luck finding another one. As if the instruments themselves weren't bad enough, then there's the cases. This is the zipper on a cheap internet instrument after about a year. Notice how thin the zipper pieces are and how it's tearing and it's just not even working. Those corners are hard for a zipper to go around. You need a special heavy duty uh, zipper. I've seen parents very dismayed that their, their fancy fabric case breaks and they go to the music store to buy one and realize that a quality case is going to run them 80 to $100, which is actually more than they paid for the instrument. So even the cases, they are cutting corners, no pun intended. In the band world, these instruments have a nickname. They're called ISOs. Uh, it stands for Instrument Shaped Object. And that, that's been a legal sticking point as well. If you call a specific brand an ISO, you're likely to get sued. Google Brooke May's lawsuit for a story about a music store that singled out a specific brand for being low quality or ISOs. The manufacturer of those instruments sued the music store to the tune of almost $21 million. One of the things I think it's really important for parents to hear from band directors is how heartbreaking it is when a student's instrument breaks. Uh, the best analogy I have is sports. Uh, imagine that your, your child is on the soccer team and you go to the game to watch them play and they're on the bench and the cleats are broken or their shoelaces are broken. Something about the equipment that you gave them doesn't let them get on the field. I think that helps you understand how heartbreaking it is. They just want to fit in. This is middle school, folks, where most band programs start. Every sixth, seventh, fifth grader they just want to fit in, they want an instrument that looks like everybody else's, they want to sound like everybody else, and they don't want to draw attention to themselves. But when you give them these off-brand in instruments from the internet, now they have to go, hey, my instrument doesn't sound like that, my instrument doesn't work that way, my instrument's key fell off, it's sad. And I, the best word I have is it's, it's heartbreaking to watch. Look, I get it, I'm, I'm a father of three young children, and they come home with paperwork to buy something for an activity, and the first thing I do is go, hmm, I can get that cheaper. I'll look on Amazon, I'll look on other places, but you know, when my son comes home for, for baseball or football, the first thing I'm not thinking is that I can buy a, a batting helmet or a piece of safety equipment at a dollar store, because I know that those things have really important functions and they need to be made just right. So, you know, while I can buy off-brand pencils and markers and things like that, when it comes to safety and things that are really important or their ability to keep up with their peers, it doesn't, it's not worth it. The solution to all of your problems band related is to 
contact your band director. So solutions, I told you I would have some solutions for you. If you, if money is an issue and you are looking at buying one of these internet instruments and you're still convinced even after all the evidence I've shown you of how it's not gonna last a year, the best point I hear from parents is, you know what, I don't know that my son or daughter is going to continue in band past a year, so maybe this is okay. To which I would say, talk to your local music store. Every local music store that I've dealt with, and I've worked in several different states at this point, has some sort of pay-as-you-go budget rental program where you can pay as little as $20 for a name brand quality instrument, and every penny of that $20 goes towards your instrument. So there's no interest, there's no nothing, every penny goes towards eventually buying it. And there are no strings attached. So if after two months, your student decides that band is not for them or you want them out of band, you simply take that instrument back to the music store and you're done, that's it. You're out a couple months of rent. And that little bit of extra money is way worth it when you consider that that instrument is going to play better, perform better. It's not going to break down constantly. They're not going to sound differently there than everyone else. That little bit of money is well worth it. Now, what if $20 a month is not in the cards? What if that is a stretch for your family situation right now? And your choice is either buy this really cheap uh, foreign-made instrument off the internet or don't do band. Well, I've got a secret here for you. Band directors have school instruments. If you contact your band director and ask them and say, hey, I want to do band, little Johnny is really interested in it, little Susie wants to play the clarinet, but we cannot get an instrument right now. Do you, can you help us? I guarantee you, your band director will find a way. Once you have an instrument to get started, if you're borrowing one from your band director, borrowing one from a friend, keep your eyes peeled on Craigslist, Facebook local, Facebook shopping, Facebook local, whatever it's called now. Instruments will pop up for sale. If you know what brands you're looking for, you can get a well-built instrument. Very cheap. You just got to keep an eye out. Uh, again, ask your band director, what are some brands for my child's instrument that I should be looking for? Oftentimes, I bet you'll hear the word Yamaha, but sometimes there are some other ones. Band directors, if you're watching this, you've gotten this far through it, what are some of the war stories that you've dealt with with ISOs? Don't, don't tell me brands, just tell me what happened. Put them in the comment section. Let's leave sort of a legacy of, to help parents understand some of the issues they're going to deal with. Again, this video is part of the Band Directors Anonymous project that I started, a band director making videos for other band directors. I have several other projects in the works. My next specific video will be about explaining the black voodoo that is key signatures to young band students and helping them understand in a way that they can relate to. I use video games as an analogy and I find that it works really well. It's something I struggled with until I found this. I also have several uh, devices that I'm developing and making. Uh, if you use the burp for your brass instruments, I'm working on something very similar that's a fraction of the cost. Uh, if these are things that interest you, hit the subscribe button so you know when I release these videos. If you have ideas of things that you want explained in video format, let me know. I'm active on Twitter. My email is in the description. If this is the first of my videos you've seen, here are a couple of other ones. Thanks for watching. The advice and content of this video is my personal opinion. Not every instrument sold on the internet is poorly made. Talk to your band director.